It sure looks like your first war pony. All right, let's go. Hello. Oops, I have a little helper with me at the moment, too. We'll see if she decides to hang out for a little bit. She uh, was walked over to the door and was very adamant that she come in and hang out for a bit. All right. Got dice to do today. Just lots of dice. Um, we did these sort of tests last time with some different neon pigments that I hadn't used before. <laughs> Yo. Uh, and they did some like different interesting things. We were trying to get kind of a Petri effect with them. And so I tried a few different things. And it turns out that like the pigment just sinks anyways. So I think I can get like a Petri look if I just let the, um, here I'll show you. I'll show you how much it sink, sank. Let's see if I can show you how much it sank. Yeah, you can see how much that pigment there sank to the bottom. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna work on those today. We're gonna we're gonna try this again, and just do it so it's a little. Yeah, yeah, they glow in the dark. So we, we've got all we've got all of our materials here, including our our glow in the dark powder. But we're gonna we're gonna want the the. <laughs> it looks like a slime mold. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of the idea to a certain extent, because we're trying to do like a petri effect, which is kind of, kind of looks like a, a petri dish. Are you comfy there? He seems to be comfy there. Um, and then uh, I'm going to finally do the that B D20. I think I have, you know, a fix for that now. Um, and then we have some... Oh, you, you headed back out? I think she's headed out. All right, I'm gonna get, let the cat out. All right, out you go. Bye bye. Bye bye. No, you're hanging out in here. Okay. She's gonna hang out in here for a little bit, but uh, I just need to remember to kick her out before uh, before I start messing around with resin. Um, so yeah, so we have we have that set of 46s. We have the BD20 we're gonna do, and then I have a set of um, like a seven piece set, and it's going to involve. What are you chewing on? What are you, wait? What are you chewing? Oh, I think it's a piece of floor. Um, probably shouldn't be. Eating. What are you eating? What are you eating? Get that out of your mouth. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to be doing a uh, seven-piece set that's going to include these little red hands that I made. <laughs> what do you have in your mouth? What do you have in your mouth? Stop eating little pieces of floor. You don't need little pieces of the floor. I have, um, the floor is kind of all torn up in here. <laughs> I have really old, uh, like laminate, and you, you, it's like the kind they have in like school or something, but it's all broken over here. So she was trying to eat a piece of that. What do you have in your mouth? No, don't find another piece. That piece is bigger, at least she's not going to be able to eat it. Why are you chewing on flooring? But yes, so, uh, no, <laughs> playing Age of Calamity. No worries, we'll see if, uh, see if some other folks show up too. I'll just keep rambling too. But yes, we're gonna we're gonna make a seven-piece set of dice with these red hands in them, which took me well, far too long to make. I say far too long, but they took about you know the amount of time that I would expect it to take, just because they're so small. Uh, and those are gonna be with some 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 gold foil and stuff. Uh, and then I do also have a set, a different set. Um, here I'll show you. They're done, sort of. Uh. Oh, they're in the, in the tumbler at the moment, I think. Uh, no, I did not say I'm looking at it. Oh, they're in here. All right, because I have to find them, apparently. Here's one. Here, I'll grab a couple. All right, and so I have this set over here um, that I did a little bit ago that have, like, all sorts of blue holographic in them um, and I like and this is for a, a commission and they all turned out well except for this one has kind of a funky spot 
where it got sanded. Yeah, let's see if it'll focus. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on. It never likes to focus. There we go. This is one funky spot where it got sanded. You can see. Um, and so I am thinking that I'm going to make one more die like that, and then I'll make. So since I, I only have my fate dice mold set up with four dice, I don't have any like single ones. So I'm gonna make one more of this kind, and then I'm gonna make three that I'll use as like spare dice because I like sending extra dice when people order dice. So if I have you know a few extra of these, I can send them along with other orders. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. I don't know what necessarily I want to do for the other three. I guess yeah, extra dice always good. <laughs> um, oh, and then I have I have this set that I'm slowly working on. Um, I am slowly building up a rainbow in these. So I have a I have like a pink, an orange, and a yellow already in here in really really thin layers. And so we're gonna add green today. <laughs> This is just kind of a working on it over time sort of set. So I've got that stuff over here. So I guess all we really need to figure out, what all I really need to figure out is what I want to do with like the last three uh, sections in here. I guess I could do, uh, no I actually really couldn't do the same thing. I don't think I'd have enough of these. So. I don't know, they might just end up as like dump molds if I have extra resin elsewhere. That's probably what's going to happen. So we've got those over there. So there's a couple things i got to set up before we can actually get to pouring resin. Uh, one of them is that these, the um, neon D6s, they're going to have little tiny butterflies in them, which I do have here. And I want to coat those in a little bit of UV resin just to kind of protect them once I stick them in the molds. You know, I want them to I want them to uh, not get scratched up once I start sanding and stuff. You know, just give them a little bit of an extra barrier. Let's, I'm just cleaning off a little bit of area on my mat here. It's it's kind of clingy. It's uh, just a silicone mat, so it likes to pick up dust and stuff. So just a spot that maybe doesn't have quite as much dust. Uh, how's things otherwise? Just with me? Uh, things are good with me. I'm teaching myself Blender, which is fun because um, I have a resin 3D printer that's on the way. Um, and I've never used Blender before, which is a 3D modeling software, if anyone's here who doesn't know. Um, but that hopefully means that I can start making myself some of my own masters and stuff for things. Um, and I think it'd be kind of fun to start do trying to do some like resin keycaps maybe. Um, and it also means that I could... Warbla? Is that a brand? Uh, is Warbla a, a brand? But, um, 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 hopefully this means I could like 3D model some things and then print them out and paint them to put in dice too, which could be fun and could open up, you know, some different, oh, 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 warbler like this. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about something to print little tiny resin pieces. And then the 3D modeling is, is on the computer. You ready to go out now? I think Kitty Cat might be ready to go out now. Alright. You ready to go out? Okay. Out you go. Bye bye. She's had her walk around. But um, I did I did post a picture of like my first ever thing that I made in in um, Blender on the Discord. Let me if anyone wants to go take a look. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, don't feel like you have to chat with me if you're in the middle of something. Um, 
but uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm slowly learning how to use the three D modeling software, which is kind of exciting. And then let's see what's going on with me. I have a little bit of a headache today, but that's because it's windy. Like I don't know, the wind always I always seem to get like a little bit of a headache with the wind, which is just kind of unfortunate. That's okay. It happens. Oops. So I'm going to do five of each color because we're going to have probably one on like each side except for the side where the color's coming from. Yeah, bariatric pressure. Yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. Um, what was I saying though? I'm working on getting a Minecraft server set up with some friends, which is fun. Getting, getting things figured out there. Um, that's still a long time coming, but we're still like figuring out, you know, how we want things set up and everything. And let's see, what, I don't know, what's, what's new with me? <laughs> I have a kind of a schedule at this point, I do a little bit of the, kind of the same thing all the time. I'm, I just make lots of dice. Or make molds. I made new molds. They're all like, they're all like nice and shiny and don't have resin all over them. That's how you can tell they're new. Also, you can still read the tops. Uh... <laughs> Fancy new, yeah. Uh, oh, but but uh, oh, resin 3D printing. I think is where I was where I was going. Um, no, I'm getting, I'm getting a re little resin 3D printer, which is very exciting. It was my birthday gift for my parents, which is very nice of them. There's five of those. Um, so that's going to be coming in soon, and then, then I have to figure out how to use it, which is going to be the, uh, the hard part. But I feel like it's going to have some, some different uses, and so it's going to open up some possibilities for making some different things, which I'm excited about. Is there anything... Hmm. Is there anything besides, like, resin keycaps that would be really cool that's, like, small, but that would be cool out of, like, if I made, like, a mold of it? I'm trying to think of, like... I, I'm the kind of person that I like collecting things that are like different and unique but also useful or usable in some way. Like I, I collect teacups and I like teacups because they're pretty and they're all kind of different and stuff and I, I like the weird ones. I like all the ones that are just you know shaped weird and all that sort of stuff but they're still usable. Like I, I can still have like a tea party and have people over and we can use the teacups for drinking tea out of. Um, and like I think keycaps and dice are kind of like that too to a certain extent where you know you can get unique ones that are you know very pretty or very interesting to look at um, but they still have some sort of function to them you're using them for a game you're using them with your keyboard uh, and I guess I'm trying to think of some Make little coins. I am thinking that it might be nice to make a D2. Um, that's something that I've seen some other dice makers do, where they have, um, you know, the seven piece, and then all, they actually have an eight piece set because they also have a, a, D, a like a coin that has like their logo on it. And I was thinking that that might be kind of cool. Like I do want to do some like I kind of want to try doing like a big D20 um, or a big D6. Maybe easier to start with a big D6. I think I could model that easier. Um, but do something like like bigger, bigger dice, um, but like coins, yeah, yeah, I, I, that was actually a kind of a thought, was to do like, let's do like a D2. Oof. Uh, I don't know that I'd want to do that out of resin, um, I, like, I like that idea, but I don't necessarily want to make anything out of resin that's going to be near food. Cause I don't know how food safe my resin is. 
just cut on each of these in a little bit. That is a good idea though. That was a good idea of something like small. That's that's kind of in that same range. But yeah, probably they, yeah, they probably do have food safe resin. I'd have to do a little bit more research into that. Um, because I've seen people make like cutting boards and stuff. But at least with what I have now, I don't know that this stuff's food safe. So I wouldn't feel super comfortable making those at the moment. But then, I mean this it is I'm working it's basically plastic. Like, you know, it's like uh, heat resistant and stuff. And also like the the this the resin, the two part resin that I use now, um, I know that it isn't heat resistant. And that's because I've tried making um, coasters out of it. And I'm actually using a coaster that I made. I'm using a coaster that I made. But um, here, let me see if I can show you as an example. Um, I put a hot mug on it. Oh! Oh, you mean they go on, like, the outside. Oh, uh, see, but see, that's that's an idea. Little markers, but let's see if I can show you how this... Okay, you can kind of see that ring there. It's just kind of dented a little bit. And I did recently get some... Oh, here, actually, there, there's a good example. You see that dent there? That's from where I had a mug. Um... My other, I actually do, have, I've been using a couple of coasters that I made, but I'm, I'm like, I don't want, really want to sell those because they're going to dent a little bit. I did get a little bit of a different two-part resin that uh, it looks like it has like a higher heat resistance to it. And so I'm kind of thinking that I'll use that to like just coat the surface of some coasters. Because like these, they don't like really melt. They just kind of dent if you put something really hot on top of it. And so if I have something that's even just a little bit more heat resistant, I can imagine that that would protect it fairly well. So that's kind of my thought. I should do that at some point. Maybe we'll experiment with that at some point. I've been just doing a lot of commissions, though, recently, so I haven't had a ton of time to experiment with things. Probably should open up some more commissions, too. I've been doing, like, a lot of, like, complex commissions recently. Like, uh, like with the red hands and stuff. And those take a lot of time. I might raise my prices on those. Because, just because they take so much time to do. Although, alternatively, actually, you know what? Maybe I won't. I think that some of that will get easier to do once I can 3D model things on the computer and print some things out. But... Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Like a, 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 a um, mug marker. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I've seen the like, little things that they sell at the store for like wine glasses and stuff for at parties. Where everybody has like their own little charm and stuff. But yeah, for like mugs and stuff. I don't really drink wine. <laughs> drink a lot of tea, not a lot of wine. Cat toys. I mean, that's basically what I'm making now, isn't it? At least my cats seem to think so. As long as I don't steal the D4s, it's fine. Again. No, um, I actually have a couple of, like, I, when I first started doing dice, um, I got the really, really cheap molds on, like, Amazon. And they did not work great. You know, they, they worked-ish. Not great. And I wanted to be able to, you know, make things... I, I kind of was like, I kind of want to make be able to make these and then make it so that people could buy them if they want. I I was so hesitant actually to get masters made for for like my own dice so that I could sell them and stuff because I wasn't sure people would be interested. I was not sure if there was going to be an interest or not. Also I had to like figure out a logo and stuff but uh, and masters are just expensive. Um, but uh, well, I did. Where was I going with that? Oh, the, the old the old molds. Um, they had some like big dice. Um, oh, thank you. It's it's an alchemical thimble for gold. Let me see if I have one here. Here's, here's an example. Yeah, those old cheap molds. Um, they did have like big dice. Wait, what looks like an eyeball? 
Oh, oh, my my logo looks like an eyeball. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of like that too. Um, no, they had like the big dice molds, um, and so I have actually given my cats a couple of the old dice from these, the the big ones. There's like a D10 around here somewhere that, that one of them has been batting around. I just I'm just like, all right, you can have this one. Yeah, there's so there's multiple like alchemical symbols for gold. Bring back phone charms. I have phone charm. Well, the problem is that none of the phones today have the little loop for phone charms. I was I was talking to someone at one point about phone charms, and we were like, we should bring those back. But there's the phones just aren't built. For, they don't have the little loop to be able to attach uh, phone charms anymore. I have the um, I have the like connectors. I have the little like uh, string parts for phone charms. To make them, I could make phone charms, but they just, they're just they're not attached to phones. <laughs> I'm making a little bit of a mess with these, which is a little unfortunate. Ooh, I might. Eh. This, sh yeah, this should. I feel like those are fun. Keychains just aren't the same. You can only you only really have like one keychain usually, but like phone charms, the whole point is you like collect a whole bunch of different things. Okay, I'm gonna move the ones. Oh, make the Legend of Zelda rupees. Like as a, as a uh, as a phone charm, because I can see that like as a phone charm, just by themselves, it's like, eh, what's the point of that? But if it was, if it was, or like I, I could see that as jewelry too. Actually, that could be really cute as jewelry. And just gonna, there you go. Um, and I could get back into making some more jewelry and stuff too. That's where that's where I started with resin. That's uh, part of the reason I started doing dice. It's because a D and D buddy mentioned making dice, and I'm like, oh, I have the materials for that. I have resin at home because I'd done a little bit of jewelry making and stuff. But obviously that's not really my focus now. It's, I don't know, it was never really, I don't know, there wasn't as much of an interest in it, I guess. And I feel like I have also gotten better at resin now. I don't know, if I do, I don't know, if, if I go back to doing, like I did a holiday, I, I did like a holiday bazaar um, before making dice. That's like the extent of, of my, my, shop stuff before dice really um and so if i if you know farmers markets and bazaars and stuff open up again i might go back to making some more jewelry and soap and that sort of thing because i do enjoy making those things and i think they make a little bit more sense for like local local bazaars and craft show type things although at the same time if i made a whole bunch of dice we do have a local like gaming store i wonder if they'd be just in selling them, but that's a that's a different story. More class-based D and D stuff for sure. Do you mean like? Yeah, I mean at the moment it's not really an issue. I my my issue at the moment is building up stock. I need to be able to make enough stuff. That would be, I would go to ask them if I had a bunch of stuff built up. But I'm still, still getting that figured out. Dice or trinkets. Alright. Bookmarks. Oh, I actually have molds for bookmarks. Uh, my problem, I think I might have some bookmarks somewhere here. Do I have any bookmarks somewhere? Put in here. Um, let me see if I have any bookmarks. Um, and if I do, I can show you what the issue is. I mean, 
I have here. I'll show you something else interesting that I have a mold for. I don't know that I have. I don't know if I have any bookmarks made. Um, I also have a mold for journal covers. So I, can, I could make like journals and stuff. That was something I was actually thinking of doing at one point was trying to do like making like journals and stuff. Oh wow, that's really cool. Made bamboo bookmarks that look like lace. That's really cool. Um, no, I, the, the problem that I had with bookmarks is very similar to the problem that I had with the um, coasters. And that was that they got very bendy because they just don't have a very high heat sensitivity to them. You know, when you have dice, it's very compact, but the bookmarks were so thin that they got kind of bendy. But maybe with a slightly different resin, maybe the one that I just got or something, might work a little bit better. I suppose I could branch out from just uh, resin things too. Like I do like doing other things. Uh, could do the bendy type bookmarks with a little. Oh, like the ones that fold over. Ah, like little ones that like clip and stuff. I I see. I see. Um, what I was going to say though is that it doesn't, I guess I don't necessarily have to do resin stuff too. Because like, I have all the materials for making soap. I like making soap. But. Charm for charm bracelets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those get small though. Um. I need a little bit more resin. Some of this stuff, we'll see how much detail and stuff I can get with the uh, 3D printer. Yeah. But it, yeah, it could be fun to just make some, make, just make some little things that don't necessarily have any sort of like inherent use to them, but are just there to be fun, be fun and cute. All right, let me put this away. Put this back on. I don't want to. I don't want my bottle of UV resin to end up cured somehow. That would be not good. All right, those should all be coated at least a little bit. Now I'm gonna just nuke those. And these are all little glow-in-the-dark butterflies, by the way. There's going to be a lot of glow-in-the-dark. Hopefully they stand out. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. Um, I guess we'll find out. Well, that should be all of the uh, res UV resin that I need, I believe. Yep, should be all of the UV resin that I need. Let me start putting that stuff away. Next thing that I'll need to pull down is that. I'm gonna probably run this like twice and then flip them over and run it once more. So while those are while those are curing under the lamp, slide that over and run that one more time. Like I said, uh, I need to get a B. I have my little my little Tupperware con <laughs> magic science. I uh, I have my little Tupperware container here of bees because that's a thing that I have. Um. I need to grab a little bee here, and we're going to glue it into this D20 mold. There's a, a layer of clear resin in here already, and so we're going to glue down a bee to that so that it stays put. Uh, so we need to find, just find a good one. That one's maybe a little funky. Do we want one that's like in flight? If I can get that in there. That might be kind of nice. Have one that's wings are out a little bit. You know, there's a couple, a couple different options here, like. And that one 
his legs sticking out all weird. Oh, this, this lady's looking nice. You get that leg off of her, though. Mm, it'll be. Let's see if I can see if it'll focus. There we go. Little bee. Maybe this one. I think I can get this one in there. And I think I'm gonna just gonna. That one's a good one. Put that back in my back in my Tupperware of bees. Uh, and I'm just gonna use the same stuff that I use to attach multiple things. Most things. But let me set this over here for now. Set that down. Let me flip these over, and we're gonna we're gonna nuke them one more time. I just want to make sure that if there's any on the back, it also gets cured. Just I'm not working with sticky butterflies. Ah. Nice. I have these in kind of the same colors as. Oops. As the uh, pigments that is going to be going in as well so you know I've got kind of like a pink to go with the pink and blue to go with the blue etc 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 that is part of the reason that I'm like not sure if they're going to show up too well too even when it's glowing because I think they glow fairly similar colors as well so, I don't know. They might end up being subtle butterflies. We'll see if we're, we're going to make them. And then if they don't end up, you know, how the person wants, then we'll just uh, do something else. Which is fine. So I'm going to get these all flipped over and nuked again. Alright. Nuke those one more time. Oops. I can turn it on. There we go. Ah, all right. And so my my fancy uh, thing for attaching things to then put resin over them. <laughs> Selmer's glue. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out how we're gonna glue this down. Uh, the thing about Elm, El the reason that Elmer's glue. This is the second time that someone has talked about. Uh, having like an Indiana Jones style uh, thing today. We're talking about that in the, one of the discords that I'm in too. It's really funny. Uh, that that sounds that, that does sound really cool though. Like that sounds like or just a fun sequence to to experience. All right. Did I play Breath of the Wild? I did. I don't play a lot of video games. Uh, my my brother's the video game person. I I will like watch let's plays and stuff, but I don't know. I just always feel like I never really have the time. The gasp that I don't play video games. I don't know. I've always been like an art person, I guess, and also a uh, feels guilty if I'm not being actively productive person, which is not necessarily healthy for me. I um. Well, I was going to, to be fair, I was going to, I was working full-time and going to school part-time for a few years there. So I didn't really have a lot of time. I, I mean, I totally got burnt out, like, you know, there's that, but, um, let me see if I can, I'm going to try and get some glue here and get this glued down. I just want to make it so that it's going to stick in the mold. Okay. So beautiful. I've seen stuff from it, and it looks beautiful. I just don't play a lot of games. Okay, let me see if I can get this where I want it, and then press it down so that it gets glued in place. Not game, just Breath of the Wild. To be fair, I did know what you meant by B-O-T-W. Like, I feel like that's got to count for something. Alright, I'm gonna... 
So I'm going to let that dry. I think that's kind of where I want it. It's kind of centered. Yeah, it's kind of centered. None, nothing's touching the edges. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to let that dry and then we'll, we'll make sure oops, make sure that it's, uh, it's stuck on there. I'll set the glue off to the side for now. Let's just set that out of the way. Cool. So we've got all of our little bits and bobs made now. Like I said, got all of our little bits and bobs made, so we're gonna need to just kind of grab our pigments, put things, get everything laid out. I think. So let me let me grab our oops, put our molds for our neon things. Ah, okay. I'm going to open all of these up, um, just so that I can put the butterflies towards the uh, towards the lid. Just spend the whole game in your underwear riding horses and eating bugs if you want complete freedom. That's pretty funny. Alright, well, maybe I'll have to check it out. I'm more of a puzzle game kind of person, I guess. I have played some puzzle games. It's true though. No, I, 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 I believe you, I believe you. It's just funny. Alright, I'm just setting these up here. Oh, you can't even set it, see where I'm setting them. I'm just setting these, I took the lids off. I'm setting all of the butterflies on the lids so I have easy access to them and they're not going to get, like, dirty or anything. And also, you know, then I have them where it, like, divided up into the section that I have. It has puzzles. No, it sounds like a cool game. Ah! And giant robots and horses. And what you can feed? Dogs? Is that supposed to be dogs? Ah. And do you can feed? Do the doi. Alright. Well, see, yeah. We'll see if I uh, find some free time at some point. I've been I've been focusing pretty pretty heavily on uh, trying to you know do dice stuff at the moment, which has been very nice. It is you know work now, which is good. All work, no play. Well, I was gonna say, and then uh, my current thing that I'm I'm. Uh, having fun with this Minecraft, so because <laughs> I just got it recently, I haven't played it before. Everything's new. It's just like, oh, this is fun. Ah, there's so much random. Where's some crap on here? All right. Uh, so we have all of our pigments here. So we're going to add that to all these, and then we're going to have just like a clear that has a little bit of our sparkle in it. That just had some of the glow powder in it, so we'll... Actually... This is... <laughs> I very rarely play games. In this case, I've been playing uh, it because I've been playing it with, like, a friend. I, uh, I don't make the time to play games, really. That's really what it comes down to. I, I am bad at making time to do things. I always feel like I don't have time for things. Uh, that's part of the reason that streaming has been nice, is because it has given me the time to do things, which might sound a little bit backwards, but, like, uh, you know, there's certain art projects and stuff that I have been wanting to work on and just haven't um like like the like the bird painting over here well painting i guess is a it's a strong word for whatever this is oops 
the, the bird painting. Uh, I've been wanting to work on this for a while and just like never got around to it. Um, and then also the, like the, the bow tie that I was working on with some moss in it. I've been wanting to do that for a while. I've had that set off to the side, you know, birds. Um, I've debated using streaming as an excuse to play some games too. Cause I, you know, I don't play, like I said, I don't play a lot of video games. I just don't make time for it. But I don't know if there'd be an interest in that. That'd probably be like a Saturday thing. I'd probably do like arts and crafts on Wednesday and then Saturday's kind of my free day. Sometimes I still do resin stuff, but you know, sometimes I work on other arts and crafts projects and stuff too. But you know, I could make it more of a free day and do some gaming there too. But it really just depends. It really just depends on I don't know if that's uh, gonna confuse people. Don't ne know necessarily what I'd play either. All right, so there's one for yellow. Hmm. I want to try and use this one for blue. It's all dry, so. Does this have white in it? Uh, all's fair. i use this for blue, that's fine. Got this one for pink. So I guess this one will get used for green. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately it comes down to like, what do I want to do? I don't know, I guess, I guess that's really kind of how I view like streaming and YouTube videos and that sort of stuff is like if you're gonna do streaming or YouTube videos or something like that there's a certain amount of like trying to make things entertaining um, but also like it makes the most sense to either stream or videotape or whatever something that you're gonna be doing anyways because it's fun because you enjoy it like you know if you're don't, don't necessarily try to go do something that's not something you would normally want to do anyways. And I don't mean like necessarily, you know, there's certain things that you probably wouldn't do, certain like challenges and stuff that you wouldn't necessarily do if you weren't going to be videotaping it or something. But I mean in the sense that like, if you don't, if you're not really like a video game player, it doesn't make sense to have like a video game YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not a crafter, it doesn't make sense to try and, like, do arts and crafts necessarily, unless it's just for, like, fun. I don't know. And to be fair, that's something that I've kind of learned over time to a certain extent, too. Um, I would, I do kind of want to make YouTube videos, but that just takes more time. <laughs> it's always channel do list stuff. Yeah, basically. But at the same time, like, I do recognize that there's other people that are watching so I do want to do stuff that is also entertaining for those people. I want to do stuff that's fun for me and also entertaining for the people who are just tuning in to hang out. Oh, I'm a little sniffy today too. I think allergies are kicking in. Okay, there we go. Got our blue, our pink, our green, and our yellow. And then we need one for a clear. I just want to have clear in it. I did not clean these out. I have a little bit of a mess off to the side here, I will admit, where I have just not cleaned all of my uh, all of my, my mixing cups and everything. This one looks like it had like clear in it before with some, some gold shimmer, so I'm just going to use it for that again. <laughs> More jokes wouldn't be bad. That would require me to actually be witty. I don't know about that one. I feel like that one's a stretch. Some of that stuff I feel like is easier to do if you have someone you're working off of too. At least for me, I feel like I work best in a sort of collaborative space. I don't know, I'm not always the best at like coming up with ideas. I'm better at extrapolating on ideas. Um, yeah, you know, which kind of makes me a little bit sad. I was thinking about that earlier today. I was just like, I was watching, 
I was watching a video of, of uh, a couple of guys that were trying to cook, um, like, without using their hands. <laughs> what are you trying? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll be the, the straight man. Um, yeah. To be fair, I love doing, like, pratfalls and stuff. I love being over the top. I just never know what sort of sense of humor, I guess, people are gonna have. I guess it's, it's a little bit of knowing your audience to a certain extent. Also, I just feel like I haven't had as much, I don't know. Like I said, I work, I work best, like, working off with somebody. Which is why I like doing commissions. No, it, it's, yeah, I feel like my brain doesn't work half the time. Hmm, maybe I won't use this one for clear. It looks like it has some random blue and orange bits in here, which I don't know if I like that. Let's just grab a... Oh, I know, can't please everyone. I know, I know. Uh, where's my... I'm gonna grab some a clean mixing cup for this one. I say that, and then I put some sort of little random pieces on there. Oh. Ah. Part of it is just having the space to do stuff, too. Which might sound weird, but... I don't know, I was very much more over-the-top silly, which I enjoy being over-the-top silly. I like going on, on random rants or acting mock offended about things or you know randomly falling over and that sort of stuff that stuff's fun but like i haven't seen anybody in a year i haven't seen anybody in a year except my brother and he's used to it by now so you know it's hard to do that more than once there we go all right, let me, let me add a little bit of our pigment to all of these. A little ridiculous, dumb, over-the-top, silly, and outrage will get you far, because then the smooth, subtle shit goes over so much better. What do you mean? Are you saying that in, like... Because I guess uh, I'm, I guess I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I guess because like the way I'm reading it, I'm thinking of like if you go and and watch um, like a TV show or something, and you have that one character that's kind of a little bit silly, and then there's something that's like actually like sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for. I guess it's kind of like how I was talking about negative space and that sort of stuff too, but uh, if you have a character that's kind of normally over the top silly and then suddenly they're serious, it has more weight to it. Is that kind of what you're saying? Um, or are you saying... If you... Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see. Okay. When you're actually serious... Ooh, that's so bright pink. Ooh, okay. When you, when you take, like, the small stuff lightheartedly, but actually treat the serious stuff with, like, seriousness, it, it means more. Pank! Pank! Look how pink it is! Um, uh, I was thinking, I guess the other... No, but it's pretty! It's all pretty! I like the pink. I like the pink. Okay. Fine. I see how it is. Um, I was thinking of, um, I was talking about this at one point with, I, I might have mentioned it here, but I was talking about it with, I think, my grandma at one point, who also does a lot of art stuff, um, and maybe my dad. Nah! Oh, you fuck off. I got the pink where I want it. Um, I like the pink. It's so pretty. I, I like all the neon colors, they're really fun. I was worried about the green, because it, it doesn't look very neon here, but then once I got it in the dye, it looked a lot more neon, which was nice. Okay. Uh, 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 negative space, that's what I was saying. Like, 
in any type of art, it's if used correctly. Is this is this macro? Oh, this is micro. I want macro pearl. Uh, I want this one. Um, if used correctly, having a certain amount of space where there is nothing makes things really good. Um, and I mean that for pretty much every type of art. And that might sound kind of weird, but I mean that like, it's why I'm bad at watercolors. I'm really bad at this. And I do recognize that I'm bad at using negative space. Um, in like watercolors, part of making a really pretty watercolor is knowing where not to paint. Um, I'm, I very much have, you know, I, I make things very, very busy. Let me put the lid on this. You know, I make things that are very, very busy. I'm going to go back to my, ah, my crow painting over here. This is obviously, like, I have negative space in here, but it's obviously very, very busy there. You know, I have this space here where there's nothing really happening, and it makes it so that the bird is more in focus. It's more of the focus. But, uh, you know, I do things very, very busy. Uh, but I was talking about this, and I, my, my, I, not argument necessarily, but my, my theory was that it works for pretty much any type of art. That, that it's, like, comedians. Comedians are very good at knowing when not to talk. Um, it's something that I've noticed, you know, just watching, like, comedy shows and stuff. A lot of the comedy comes from them not saying anything. You know, knowing when to let people fill in the blanks, uh, knowing when to pause for people to laugh, because you know, pausing can give, be an indicator that it's time for people to laugh, and all and all that sort of stuff. Narrative silence. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh dear. This stuff just gets everywhere. And to be fair, that's why I'm bad at telling jokes, is because I don't know when to shut up. Uh, all right, let's see if I can get that back on. I'm a rambler, if you couldn't tell. Oh, dear. And in music, too, having like a grand pause where you have everything like swell and then suddenly there's nothing. Beautiful. It really adds, to, and then it kicks back in, you know, it's, it's great. Need some more than the yellow, I think. I need to open that back up. I made a mistake. Do you need the right style of joke is all? Mm, fair, fair. And a little bit of this. I just need to know how to slow down, too. Um, that's something I kind of... I need to take the time to actually plan things. Um, that's really what it comes down to, is taking the time to plan things. I, I, it was something that was really made apparent to me. I did a, um, did an, uh, oh, why is my phone buzzing? I should probably turn off my uh, notifications. I'm gonna turn off my notifications. All right. No, what did I open? Okay. Uh, <laughs> What was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Oh good, the B seems to be actually be glued in place. Hopefully that works out well. Oh, I'm so sniffy. I think my allergies are kicking up because of the because of the breeze. Alright, let me get something for these. I can't remember what I was saying either. About negative space and that sort of stuff. What was I saying? All right, so we're gonna need about 30 milliliters. I'm just gonna grab a clean container for this as well. I'm gonna use one of these because it can hold 30 milliliters better. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying. That's good. 
two layers there, or is it just one? Just one, okay. Excellent. We'll mix that up in there. I don't know if that'll be enough. I think it might be. I don't want too much. I want the hands to be the focus. I just want there to be like a little bit of some gold flakes and some gold shimmer in there. We want those to be fairly fine. Uh, I'm gonna leave these out though, because we might end up adding a little bit more. That's <laughs> about how rad Link is. Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about, I'm sure. That, that sounds that sounds right. Uh, okay. I'm just want a little bit of gold shimmer. A little bit of gold shimmer, some gold flakes. Because we want the focus to be on the hands. Uh, I think that's kind of the goal. Uh, th this is for a commission set, um, and it sounds like it's for a character that, it's based around a character that has, uh, is some sort of, like, luck, uh, like, luck god or something like that, and their symbol is, like, a red hand. Uh, and then the person wanted to be able to tell that it was a hand from, like, any angle sort of thing, so no matter which way the die lands, you can, you can see the hand. Which is why I made, you know, three-dimensional hands. Which is... Which is a bit of work, but, you know. They're all, they're all done now, which is exciting. Alright, let me... I might need more gold foil on that, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm also going to do... A little bit... I, I do keychains with all of the, um... All of the, uh, uh, work. um, oh, thanks. Here, I'll show you, a, I'll show you a closer look. It took me a long while to make. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you. There's all the hands. You know, they took, they took a bit to make. Ooh. Some of them are a little bit better than others, maybe, but... <laughs> yeah! Yeah, they took a while. But, uh, thank you. That was all polymer clay. Uh... Let's see. <laughs> you live at what cost is for capitalism, hi, Jen. Uh... You were gonna talk about, uh, talk about Link's Breath of the Wild. Um, what I was saying though is this, I make like keychains with like leftover resin and stuff for, for all of the commission sets. And so this one I'm gonna do like a background of gold and then I have a hand that's not quite as detailed. And we're gonna do that and then we'll add the hand as a second layer. So I just want a little bit just to kind of coat the back. And let me set that off to the side. All right, and then I want to make I want to make a, a single die here that is going to match some of the other ones. Uh, and so that's going to be gray and well, it's going to be using this black to color the resin, and then a little bit of this gunmetal gray in there. It's kind of a dirty pour with some of these. Uh, so let's actually place these in the mold now. Also, uh, welcome Venture Rooney. Glad you could make it. Click on a few different things. So uh, this one I'm, I'm, I, this is for a commission set where I kind of have it done but one of them just didn't turn out quite right, so I'm just making an, another one. And then the other ones will be, you know, like, things I can use as bonus dice, because I, I usually send some sort of little extra extra die when people order things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these into one of the little slots here, and then we'll have to figure out, for what it's worth, you enjoy the stream of consciousness. <laughs> I appreciate that. So what y'all y'all are going to get, because... Uh, there's a certain amount of like 
of turning your brain off, I guess, for streaming. 3D print little cat paw prints to put in the dice. Ah, I just dropped something in here. That would be cute. That would be cute. See, that's I'm kind of excited for that with uh, getting the 3D printer. I can I can make all sorts of, of little things to print out and put into dice. I can start like kind of mass producing some more complex designs. Because at the moment I'm making things out of polymer clay, which works great for things like this, where I want everything to be slightly different. You know, I, I, I want a bunch of different kind of hands, have them in different shapes and stuff, makes it a little bit more interesting. But I don't, if I want to do dice that have like little, little skulls in them, you know, all of the skulls can be the same. I, I'll, you know, I can paint them mildly different and stuff. Or if I want to do like multiple dice that all have like teacups in them, I do have some teacups that I made out of polymer clay. But you know, it'd be uh, it'd be kind of cool if uh, put this one in here. It'd be kind of cool if um, uh, I could make you know more than one set, sort of with uh, more easily. I feel like that would be that'd be nice. I I, I want to do some more complex things. I like well I, I I mentioned this before. My original plan when I started making dice to sell um, was to do like little dioramas in dice. Should this one fit here? I'm gonna have something small enough that'll fit along the top. Uh, hmm. uh and so I, you know, I, I would actually like to do some of that. I think it'd be fun. I like doing themed dice. That was, that was something that was pointed out to me and it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, something that was pointed out to me, I was talking with a couple of other dice makers a while back I've mentioned this before too, I think. Um, and we were talking, I was like, I don't know what my style is. Cause like, it was like quite, quite obviously, it was a couple of other dice makers. I was like, quite obviously we make diff, we have our own individual styles of dice. Like, you know, we have kind of our own artistic, like if I saw, oh, tiny dice jails, that'd be cute. That'd be fun. Um, that'd be easier with the, um, um, filament printer, which, yeah, uh, but maybe, um, uh, because uh, I was like, if you put, if you put a set of my dice, a set of, and then a set of each of theirs dice, like, you, I, you could tell whose was whose, even without the logo and stuff, you, like, you could tell whose was whose, just kind of by what they look like, you know, we, we have our own unique sort of look to things, and to a certain extent, I'm realizing that like, it's not always true. <laughs> like, I definitely make dice, and I'm like, these could be made by someone else. Um, but, uh, uh, it's like, what is, what are our, our, what are our styles? And the kind of consensus for me was that I like making things with a theme. And that's true. I like, I like having some sort of, of, like, theme to all the dice that I make. I don't usually... Like, I, I, I take that more into account when I'm, like, inking things and stuff, um, maybe than, like, just what looks good. You know, it's like, what, what's the, what's the, what am I trying to emulate or convey here? Alright, I think that'll be, that'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Is there enough over there? Eh. I just want to make sure that every side has some blue. That's my goal here. This might actually end up going here. Alright, we're going to put that there instead. And then we'll... Uh, do I have anything that's small enough for me to rest it on top? Not really. Okay. I'm going to take a longer one, I guess, and kind of bend it here. But I, I it, part of it is just, I want to make something that's, I don't know, kind of unique. I think that'd be, it'd be nice to make something that's, you know, like, obviously made by me. Which maybe sounds a little bit weird. Yeah, if that sounds a little bit weird. Or narcissistic, I don't know. I make lots of nature dice. Yeah, that's true. I don't know, I feel like that's an easy place to draw inspiration from. 
There's just so many different, so many things out there in, in the world. Lots of, lots of places to draw inspiration. And I, and I guess found object nature dice. Like with, with just with random, random things that I've, I've found in them. Side. Those were there. That, that, and that. That there. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's a certain amount of pride that comes with with creating something. I like creating things too. I like creating creating things that other people are going to enjoy. Uh, a little cup. That's what I need. I think this actually had that gray in it. Maybe not. I guess we'll find out. There's something just satisfying in creating, too. There's something satisfying in, in having something that that is done. Um, that's, like, tangibly done. Um, yeah, that, one had, that one had gray in it. Alright, add a little bit of that to there. I remember... Um, Back when I was interviewing for the job that I had, um, I had worked as an intern there for multiple summers back in when I was in like high school and stuff. And uh, I remember one of the questions that they asked was, "What is like your proudest workplace achievement?" or something like that. Um, and I remember telling them, and it was like it, it was nothing really big. But um, there was one winter break where I'd come back and I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm back. Do you have anything that you need done? Uh, I'm here for a week if you need, want me to come in and work for a little bit. Um, and they had a whole bunch of stuff that needed unboxed. And it was all stacked in the hallway. And uh, I said that one of my proudest moments or, or most, I, I don't know if it was most satisfying or what, but um, was getting all of the boxes out of that hallway. And it wasn't because it was particularly important or anything. It was because I could physically see the progress that I was making and I knew when it was done. <laughs> Working in the yard or building something is always an achievement. Yeah, just, just, just have, having something that you know that you've completed and you can like tangibly know that you have, have done. Is, is there's something satisfying about that? Okay, I've got a gray there, and then we'll use that as a dump mold, I think, and pull these over. Can't be RC, but looking. the satisfaction of making something. And there's so many things that I, I just want to make things. And this, I think I must drive uh, like my brother and my friends mad. Cause I'm always just like, let's go, let's just like make something. Let's make YouTube videos or something. Or, or uh, you know, let's, let's, let's make a podcast. <laughs> Problem is that I'm not good at like writing things. Uh, I'm more of, I'm like, I'm good at coming up with like general ideas and I'm good at like adding little pieces to something that already exists but I'm not good at creating all of the little all of the little pieces and putting them in the correct order um, which is why I'm not a writer you know I, I, I have like an idea for a book but being able to like understand all of the individual characters and being able to write all of the the dialogue and figuring out the order of when things should happen it's not my strong suit I'm not great at that um, and so I'm always just like, let's make something. I can't write it. <laughs> it's like, I must drive them mad. Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I just want to create things. Ah. I don't know. I've, I've always done, I've always done, you know, something. I did theater growing up. I did, um, yeah, that's a point for that. Uh, yeah, I did theater growing up, I've done choir, I've done band, and then, like, painting, and I like arts. 
I never really thought that I could make it a career, though. That's why I went to school for engineering originally. Um, I literally went to school for engineering. World needs more creators. I mean, even if it's not the arts, you know, it's it's really good for people to, you know, create things. But, um, no, I went, to, I went to school for engineering originally. I didn't actually end up graduating in engineering. Um, but I remember I, I literally said that the reason I was going to school for engineering was so I could feed myself. Um, really never thought that I could do art, anything like that, as, as a career. To be fair, I did, you know, work in, like, a desk job for five years. Um, five years? Yeah, I guess it was five years. Sorry, I was just thinking of how old I was, because I started when I was, like, 20. Googly eye dice. I think I saw that. I don't know how well they'd be weighted, but like, that'd be cool. I, oh, I wonder if I could just do that with like a liquid core. I could probably do that. You know, like the doll eyes where if you move the doll, the, the eyes move with them. Yeah, they look, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that'd be doable. Set this off to the side here. This is going to be our, our little bit of green for our, our slowly growing layers of our rainbow dice and then we have our little red hands here let me pull out the molds for those i think i'm gonna want i like i like floating i have all dice exactly and that'd be fun uh, i want i think the highest numbers to be up because i'd rather it look like the hands are resting at the bottom than if the than like they're floating if you roll a high number and also because i think Polymer clay, I think, is slightly um, heavier than resin. And so I'd much rather they be mildly weighted to get a D, uh, like a 20 as opposed to a 1. Just get pre-made googly eyes and just stick them in. I've seen that. I've seen that. Um, I, I'm, always, I'm always somewhat worried about weighting and stuff, though. But, I mean, I guess if you pack it full enough, it might be fine. But that'd be fun to do. That's definitely definitely something that'd be fun to do. Make sure there's no little bits of resin on there. All right, let me. You know, I just realized that this is the moment of truth. I never actually like measured to make sure that these would all fit in here. <laughs> oh, I like how you say that's why I'm the pro, right? As I say, I'm, I should have measured to make sure these would all fit in here. <laughs> Oh no. Oh dear. Um hmm. Alright, well this one this one was the biggest and I did kind of I did kind of measure some of these. Uh this is the smallest one, it's gonna go on the D4. Yeah. I like I did try to get it so that it would be you know, it would just barely fit in there. The D4 is not very big. Oh no, did I get some sort of green on there? Um, yes, okay. And some of these should be big enough that they're not really going to uh, sink because they'll be against multiple sides, sort of. But let's see, here's here's one hand. I think I kind of, I think this one I was going to put in maybe the D6. Have it kind of nesting at the bottom here, kind of like it. It's holding everything that's above it. You know, have all of the gold above it and that sort of stuff. It was kind of maybe my thought here. And also, I think it's a little bit bigger than some of the other ones. So I think it'll fit there better. The D6 is just a nice... Gotta go. Okay, what's what's the send-off joke of the night? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I just got some green sparkles on some of these, which is not what I was trying to do. That doesn't match at all. Alright, let me... Alright, let's see... What's going to fit where... 
which one? I think we'll put this in one of the D10s. That's because I don't like that one as much. What did Tennessee? The same as Arkansas? Uh, what did Delaware? Yeah. What to Tennessee, boys, or what to Tennessee? That's a, that's a, I, there's a song. Yeah, like, like, what to Tennessee? Solid Arkansas. What to Delaware? Uh, she wore her New Jersey. Um, uh, what's another one? Something... There's one like, uh, I don't remember. There's another one I can't remember because I remember that it, it weighed a Washington. But I don't remember what the state was before that. I don't remember. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the joke. And this one I think we're going to do because it's kind of long, which I think makes sense with the... Oh! Thanks for raining. Hello! How's everybody doing? I'm, I'm putting little uh, red hands into dice, and I'm making sure everything fits. Try the Fox by Nickel Creek if you like that. Alright, I'll take, I'll take a look. Yep, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. And also, welcome, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, here, I'll show you, I'll show you what we're, what we're working with here. I gotta, I gotta show these off again before I, uh, put them into the dice. I don't know why I'm grabbing these with tweezers, but I am. Oh, thanks. So I got a little, there's the little... Oh. <laughs> well, thanks. I like making dice, it's fun. So yeah, anyways, here's some little little red hands. I mean, out of polymer clay. We're gonna be putting those... We're gonna be putting those in, uh, in some dice. Let me put these back in the correct spots. Alright. That one's gonna go into the D6. I'm just trying to make sure that everything fits at the moment. That one might be good in the D8, and then I think these two in the D10s. All right, I think we've got everything, uh, got everything all figured out. I think I'll probably add those. I think I'll probably want to coat those in resin first before I put them into the molds. So we'll just leave them on the lids for the time being. I'll just leave those there. All right, and I think we've got everything. We've got our. Got, that there. Um, I need to figure out how much we're going to need. So this is going to be about 30. This is going to be about 20. That's going to be about 20. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's about 70 milliliters. And then we'll round up to 80. So we'll do about 80 milliliters of resin. I think we've got everything all set up. I think that's everything ready to go. So, uh,. I guess maybe I think I think you arrived right as I'm about to do some resin, so I guess we'll I guess we'll get our safety equipment on and do that. Ah, if I don't knock everything over over here, I made some molds recently for some little crystals because I want to try doing some geode dice again. I made some at one point, but they the the crystals I made only made just slightly too big, and so they pushed into the the sides and made the numbers all misshapen and stuff. Resin time. Nope. This is this is why I ordered more gloves, cause I yeah. All right, let me grab new gloves. I always feel so bad about how many with how many gloves I use. Cause I get them all sticky, and then they stick together, and then I they end up torn, and I can't use them again. I wish, there, I wish there was a better way for, for me to use uh, gloves. Alright. I have my, my shrink up here. Alright. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit muffled for probably the rest of the night. Because I'm going to be wearing a respirator. Just, uh, just for safety. And because I really don't have the best ventilation in here. Yeah, this is, this is how I'm going to sound, so sorry about that, but hopefully you guys can still understand me. 
Um, now I don't, I don't have the best ventilation in here, and you know, resin can put off some fumes and stuff, so safety first. All right. So like I said, we're gonna do three, four. Yeah, we're gonna do 80 milliliters of resin. I'm gonna grab down my resin. I just got new resin recently, so it's all nice. I've always noticed when I get to like the, the last little bits of my resin bottles, it's like, I don't know. It just doesn't look as nice while I'm mixing it. It turns out fine, but it just, I don't know, it, it just looks kind of like cloudy and stuff. It's just like, <sighs> there's something, something satisfying about it being nice and clear and good color and stuff. All right, I'm going to be quiet for just a second. Uh, yes, this is art and blow resin. Um, I'm going to be quiet for a second while I pour this because I can't focus on multiple things at once. But feel free to chat amongst yourselves. And I'll be back 80 milliliters later. Now 40 milliliters. There's so much cat hair on the outside of this silicone cup. I really hope it's not, none of it's on the inside. Uh, where are we? Alright. Alright, we're at 40 with that one. How do I like it? Um, I like it good. It's rather thick, um, which, you know, some people like a slightly thinner resin, some people like a slightly thicker resin. I haven't used a lot of other types. Uh, I really only use this kind. Um, I did get some, I haven't even opened it yet. I did get like a little trial size of the liquid diamonds recently to try out. Just because it has like a, a higher, a um, little bit higher heat resistance and I want to do coasters. Yeah, there's, there's pros and cons. You're, <laughs> you're addicted to which? To the liquid diamonds or? Um, Alright, use 80. Liquid diamonds is so good. I haven't I haven't used it yet. Um no, I, I think I'm gonna mess around with that at some point. Yeah, see that's kind of what I've heard is that it's a lot thinner. And like art and glow is very, very thick. Um, but for a lot of the kind of designs that I do, I like a thicker resin. And I have a pressure pot, so the bubbles, this is not, like, too big of a deal. Um, but I, I am excited to try out the liquid diamonds. I think it'll be nice for, for some different things. But no, it looks like it has a higher, like, heat resistance than the, uh, Art and Glow does, too. Which is why I want to try it out for coasters. That's why I got it, is that I wanted to try it out for coasters and see maybe how it works for bookmarks and stuff. But that is that is good to know. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try. That's cute. What? What? Me? <laughs> it looks cute. Oh, coasters. What? Look, I have my little coasters here that I made. Just don't put anything super hot on top of it. It gets all dented. I don't know, coasters are useful. I, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier, is that I like, um, I don't know, I, I, I like making things that are, like, pretty, but also useful. Because, like, I was talking about how I collect teacups, and I like, I like collecting, like, teacups, because it's something that's, like, there's lots of different unique patterns, and they're interesting, and they're fun. But also I can use them. And I guess that's kind of how it is with like dice too. And there's certain things I just want to, I, I want to start making like maybe resin tea caps too. Because I feel like that's another thing where, you know, people collect them but also that it's useful to them. I don't know. I feel like coasters would be nice too because they're just useful. I like making useful pretty things. Or useful interesting things at the very least. I mean, 
made some, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some coasters that I made before I had a pressure pot. And I'm gonna do this quickly because that stuff's perfect. I made these like a while back. And then that's the first one I made. And like a little, little overgrown pond one. And I feel like that'd be fun to do now. Now that I have a pressure pot and hopefully, uh, Hopefully a little bit more uh, heat resistant uh, resin. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if I can do like mainly the art and glow and then do like a thin layer of the liquid diamonds on top. Cause like I said, cause it, the art and glow works okay for coasters, but it dents a little bit when you put something really hot on top of it. Which is an issue. I was showing that off earlier with one of, my, one of my coasters over here. Cause I do have a couple of coasters here that I use and they work fine. They just, they're just like slightly, slightly a little bit too, uh, too melty, I guess. Alright, we're mixing this, for anyone who does not know, just until we have all of the streaks out of there. There's still, I can still kind of see some like, two different clear, like it's clear in there, but it's kind of like two different kinds of clear and they're still, it's still a little streaky in there. So I'm just scraping the sides, making sure I get all of, you know, both kinds off so they don't end up with a glob of one kind or another. You know, I'm trying to get this mixed. It takes a while. Uh, what were you working on tonight, uh, Miss Messy? It's a raid, so I, I assume you were working on some sort of fun or craft project. Am I following you? Am I following you? I feel like I should be. Just a second. Am I following you? Oh yes, okay, I am, I am, good. All right, <laughs> had to make sure there. Ooh, you got new molds. Ooh, what sort of, ooh, what sort of molds? That's exciting. You do more, you do more jewelry stuff, right? Am I remembering correctly? I might be remembering incorrectly. I have a terrible memory. Alright, this is looking a lot better. I'm going to mix it just a little bit more just to make sure everything's all mixed together. Faber Shaker, new wing earrings, new coffin earrings. Ooh, that's exciting. You have a terrible memory too. Yeah, I always feel kind of bad because like even people who, you know, show up all the time and stuff, it's just like, what art projects are you working on? And it's just like, I'm sure I have asked that before. But also I don't have like a face to put to a name or anything to like, I don't know, I'm a very visual person, I guess. I remember things best by like visual things. Um, like if I see your name written down, I'm much more likely to remember it than I am if I hear your name or that sort of stuff. But it's just like, uh, I think I've asked this person before, <laughs> and I do not remember, but, uh, that's, that'll be fun. New wing earrings, new kind of paper shaker. How, um, the shaker, I, I, I like the shaker charms. I feel like there's something really satisfying about those. I kind of want to try doing dice again that, um, have like a shaker charm type of thing on the inside. I did one set. Um, but I think I'd do them slightly different I did, if I did it again. And also the spheres that I got to put on the inside were just a little bit too big, uh, unfortunately. Um, and so I had to do a lot of... That's <laughs> a better one! Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, the, the, like, pink and blue ones with the butterflies. That's, that's the only one that I've made with uh, liquid core, actually. I should do some more liquid core ones at some point. That's fun. Um, but no, the, the spheres that I got were just a little bit too big for the D20. Um, and so I had to do a lot of extra sanding. Just because it, kind of, it kind of pushed out the sides a little bit. And so I had to actually flatten everything. But it, it turned out good. But I, it was a little bit more work than I was hoping for. Unfortunately. 
Yeah, no, um, I should, I should do more of those. I, I want to figure out, I, I'd like to do, like, some Shaker Charm dice. That'd be fun. Lots of work, but so pretty. They're just fun, too. I, I don't know, I like stimmy things. I like, I like, uh, I don't know, like, tactile things. I feel like the Shaker Charms are fun, because it's kind of a visual tactile thing, like, you get to move it around. So that's cool. I bet you're gonna make really cute little teddy bear ones. That'll be fun. Alright, I think we're I think we're nice and mixed now. I got distracted talking, so uh, I think we're probably mixed. Alright, so let's get the ones that we definitely need first. Oh wait, Sen, see how it turned out? Do you, uh, do you, are you planning on posting pictures anywhere? I think I follow you on Instagram. I think you're the one I follow on Instagram because it's like the, the wings and the coffin earrings. You're the one that does like the rainbow coffin earrings and stuff, right? Instagram gets all your photos. Yes! Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm like, I'm not thinking about the wrong person, am I? Because that's embarrassing if I am. Yeah! Oh, you make really cute, you make really cute earrings. Um, alright, so I'm gonna pour in about 30 milliliters into here. Uh, you're the rainbow coffin girl, it's true, it's true. You know, it is a sale fast title. I mean, take it as a compliment, cause like, that's my vibe right there. Okay, I'm gonna get on to about 50 milliliters in here, okay. Alright, another 10. I always, I always pour 20 in and then check. I've noticed, just, I don't know, I always end up there for some reason. Alright, this is gonna be for the, the red hands here. Alright, that should be about 30. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Kind of close. Oh, and actually, I want to grab, I want to grab a D4 mold as well. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet of you. I ch you try and fail. Show them the shaker dice. Well, thank you. I'm. I'm. So, are you, are you the person that ordered the shaker dice? Wait, if you're the one that ordered the shaker dice, that makes a lot more sense to me now, uh, because of the, uh, rainbow bat dice as well. <laughs> Not you? Okay. The person that ordered the, uh, the shaker dice also ordered the, uh, the rainbow bat dice that I, I made. Um, and so I was like, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> but, um... But no, I, I do, I'm, uh, yeah, I made rainbow bat night dice as well. I'll have to find a photo of those to show you. That's when I was suddenly like, wait, it, it might have been her. She might have been the one that ordered those, because, uh, I'm like, that's absolutely the, the right vibe. Alright, actually, I think that's a pretty good mix of the gold shimmer and the gold flakes. I wanted just a little bit, because, you know, I want the... I want the main focal point to be the hands here, but I want enough that it, you know, looks purposeful. So, you know, I want these to be fairly small, fairly small pieces. Make sure all this is broken up and suspended in there. Cool. So we've got our, we've got our clear and our, with our gold, a little bit of gold shimmer in there and our gold, gold foil. Uh, and then we're going to do... I think about this here. So this is, we're going to be doing these. And those are going to be about five, about five milliliters each. And we're gonna, probably going to do, I think I added way too much of the pigment here. Because uh, probably about 10 milliliters here, I would guess. And then 2.5 in each of those. Mm. So let's just do that. I think that's about about where I'm gonna want it. 
I know that it's not accurate to do it this way, but it should be easier. I don't need it to be completely accurate. I'm estimating the amount that this is going to need anyways. I, I know that like these don't take exactly 5 milliliters each. It's a little bit less than that, but it's just easier for me to keep everything in like 5, 10, 15, 20 amounts since that's what my, uh, my little... Uh, oh, I forgot to put the... Uh, the I forgot. Oh no. I always feel like I'm forgetting something. And so I figured I wasn't forgetting anything because I always feel like that. I've got to put my butterflies in here. we got to put our butterflies in here. Let's stick those in. Do that quick before I uh, forget. I have little glow in the dark butterflies that I want to stick to the sides. I forgot to do it. I'm just going to put them in here so they're kind of random looking. Make sure there's not a little piece of resin in there. Oh, come on. To the side. There we go. Alright, there's our blue one. We're good, we're good. Luckily, I want the resin to be a little bit thicker for most of these anyways, so it works out, but... Uh, whoops. I'm focusing on this now since I am on a little bit of a time crunch because I totally forgot. This is what I was talking about with my terrible memory. Oh no. Ah. Also, I can't get them to stick. Okay. I'm hoping these turn out. So I, I did some experiments um, with these neon pigments. Um, I think it was on, I think it was last time, what is today, today's Wednesday, I think it was on Saturday, we did some experiments, um, and, uh, they told me, you know, I tried a few different things, but really the conclusion that I came down to was that the pigments sink, um, which in this case is good, uh, I'm trying to get kind of a petri effect, which usually you do with, um, alcohol inks, and then you you put the color and then you put the white alcohol ink and the white kind of pulls everything down uh, and then it cures with kind of like these tendrils in it um, and that's with alcohol inks and so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to recreate that with the oops, with the um, pigments that I have let's go here but since they kind of sink anyways I'm just going to try and put them in when the resin's just a little bit thicker, because last time it kind of all sunk to the bottom. And I'm going to do it when they're a little bit thicker. And, uh, hopefully, I'm going to get a lot here. Hopefully kind of get things kind of petri-ish. Now that I'm thinking about it, though, I might want to use a pipette. Uh, Dragon Man. Oh, I'm so glad! I'm so glad. Oh, glad you like them. Yeah, I like, I like, so I usually have like, whoa, what's that? Oh, thanks for following. Sasaki Woodworks. Welcome. Awesome. Um, when I'm, when I'm making dice, I usually have like a little bit of extra resin left over. Um, cause it, you know, I usually try to have like a little bit too much. Is it stopping? Um, I usually try to have like a little bit extra, because I'd rather have a little bit too much resin than too little resin. Um, and so for like commissions and stuff, I, I, um, I, oh, I hear a kitty cat. Uh, it, I just think it's kind of fun to do like, use that little bit of extra resin to like make something fun to go with, with the, uh, <laughs> the dice people order. But I always figure usually when people do like commissions, it's because they're getting 
something that's important to them. So, you know, having like, you know, a keychain or something of something that's kind of important to you, I feel like people would appreciate that too. So, at the, you know, at this point, I'm just like, yeah, I feel like that's nice. Oh, also resin artist. Awesome. I would not have guessed that with woodworks in the name. That's way too dark, but that's unfortunate on my part. I did way too much black without thinking about it, but I think we'll be okay. A little bit more, a little bit more clear. If we have extra, that's fine. That's exciting, I'll have to check them up. Alright, yeah, we don't want this to be very, very dark gray. I'm trying to get it to match some other dice. Um, this is kind of a, a redo. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that matches fairly well. Alright, we actually have quite a bit of leftover. Oh, I haven't done those yet. Alright, we don't need very much here. We need about 2.5 milliliters here. I want it to be almost exactly 2.5 because I'm kind of trying to keep it fairly. You gotta go. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for the raid. I'm glad you could uh, hang out for a little bit. It's good. To, good to have you. So have a good night. Oh, what's that? Oh. Oh, thanks for the gifted subs. That's so great. I've never had that before. <laughs> I was like, what is that noise? Oh. Well, thank you. Dragon. Yeah, thanks, Dragon Man, with all the sevens. I guess I guess you're you just have a lucky uh, username with all your sevens. That makes sense. <laughs> all right. Have a green. I might need it and add a little bit more green. I kind of added maybe a little bit too much resin there, which is fine. All right, we're gonna do about two point five in all of these as well. And these all have our, our neon pigments and also some glow-in-the-dark pigment, which is fun. Uh, Alright, let's, uh, let's add our 2.5 milliliters here as well. This is not very much, to be quite honest with you. 2.5 is not a lot of resin. Or it's a lot of resin, depending on how you look at it. But I've noticed that, like, so when I was making, like, pendants and stuff, oh. Oh, I can hear Fitz outside the door. He's very sad that I'm in here and he's not. Um, when I was making like pendants and stuff, because I did, you know, some jewelry stuff before I uh, started doing dice. Um, like a little bit of resin goes a long way. I used to kind of mix all of my... I'd usually mix my resin up. Um, you, you see how I have these containers now? I used to mix my resin up in these containers because it took so little resin to do things. Um, and so at this point, you know, I'm making, like, a lot of things at once. So a full set of dice takes about 30 milliliters, which is one of these cups. It's like a full one of these cups. And so, uh, you know, at this point, just using a mount, an amount that, you know, might fill a pendant or something, feels like so little. <laughs> And I'm just kind of estimating here because, you know, it doesn't have to be an exact amount for this. We might not even end up using all of this. It's just, you know, I want the, I want the pigments to be able to mix in well. I want to have the correct amount. I probably have a little bit too much pigment, actually. All right. Uh... I know a few people have had to head out for the night, but uh, anyone who's still here, I have a, I have a question for you guys. Um, so I've been, I've been streaming for like a little bit now. Not like a ridiculous amount of time or anything. I, how, many, how long have I been doing this? I've been doing it for a few months now. Um, what is something that I could do to make my stream better? So it, it, I'm, 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 I'm opening it up to anybody who's, uh, oops, there might have been a little bit too much resistance. Huh? I still have a little bit of resin left, which is will work out okay because I want to do 
this, I want to fill this up with clear resin. I should have done this first now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I forgot about it back there. But anyways, if anybody has any like thoughts on that, because I really do enjoy streaming and like I want to make things better and better, hopefully. <laughs> Probably show the cat more, probably. Yeah, that's that's probably the main thing. Show the show the cat more. Uh, Alright, this one's gonna have some bubbles that are gonna rise to the surface. So we're gonna let this one sit for a little bit. Um you can enjoy technical details about whatever because you're a complete layman. That makes sense. Um hmm, probably do more of that. Now this one, this one has a bumblebee in it, so it has a whole bunch of air bubbles that are, are trapped underneath the wings and stuff. So I'm letting all of those try to rise to the surface. I have it glued down, because I'm trying to get it so it doesn't... I have so many d dice with bees in them, and they've all floated to the surface, because they're lighter than the resin. Uh, I, have, I have so many failed dice attempts at doing dice with bees in them. There's a large bee market. Do you mean like for dice or just like people buying bees? Because I have my little tupper I have a tup my little Tupperware container of bees. I, I literally went on Etsy and was just like, where do I buy bees? I need bees. Alright. Let's these up. Or do you mean like bee themed things? Because I really like bee themed things. Um, what brought this B20 about? You were just surprised to see a cup of bees. Mm -hmm. Show you my Tupperware container. This is the smallest amount I could order too. And if anybody's like squeamish about bugs and stuff, maybe look away for a second. But like, let's see, it'll focus. I never like to focus this close, except when I don't want it to. Uh, come on. I'm very confused about focusing this close. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Anyways, there's there's my. Yes, this was the smallest amount I could order. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what the largest amount of dead bees I could order was. Uh, I really was not <laughs> was not looking for that many bees, but it worked out since I had so many attempts to try and get the the thing to look right. Um, let me get all there's a little like the pigment's kind of a little bit grainy, so I'm trying to get that mixed in here. Uh, I think some people use it for like home remedy type stuff like like I think some people use it for like certain like home remedy type stuff they I don't know if they eat them or what um you smell I know I know they could sell smaller lots I didn't really know how many I was going to get because I was ordering by the like weight and I had really had no way to try and they didn't really have any information for, like, how many that was going to be. I was like, I don't need that many, I'll do the smallest one. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, they're great in, in like, resin and stuff. I like stuff like that. I, I've always liked the kind of, like, oddity type things. So, you know, having, having uh, like, dead bugs in resin and stuff is just kind of cool. Maybe I'll try doing some like jewelry and stuff with those. I feel like those might make some cool jewelry. But in, in this case, I'm trying to do I'm trying to do a D20 because that's what someone requested. Um, that, and that came about because I did a full set of bee themed dice for someone. But bee nickel dice. Are you looking to get some bees? Or <laughs> is that is that what are, are you try, are you looking for bees to buy? Yeah, all right, this pigment's just a little bit grainy. I'm just trying to get some of that mixed in a little bit better. I'm gonna break up some of those clumps. Just the nature of this pigment. Not at all. <laughs> no, I had, um, so I did a set of bee themed dice uh, for a commission. I had a single dead bee. You're just delighted by the random. <laughs> Fair, fair. I know, I was kind of surprised at, like, the sort of market for it as well, but I was also just like, great, I need dead bees. 
No, I, I had a single dead bee that I had like found dead on the sidewalk somewhere. Um, and I had saved because I do stuff like that. To be fair, I have a giant dragonfly that I didn't even save for myself. My parents saved it for me because they were just like, oh, Liz would probably want this for resin stuff. Like, it's a beautiful. Like my parents pulled this out of a friend's swimming pool for me. Because they're just like, oh yes, that looks like something Liz would want. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to preserve it yet. But uh, it's just a fun thing that I have at the moment. I, I like the oddity type stuff too. I have a full uh, rodent skull over here as well that I got out of an owl pellet that I had sitting around the house. I, yeah. I mentioned I showed I sent a picture of that to some friends um, when I found it. I was like, oh, yeah, I pulled this out of an owl pellet that I had sitting around the house, and my friends were just like, only you is would have a random owl pellet sitting around your house. It's just like I mean, fair, fair, but also look at this cool skull I found. I feel like Alchemist's Attic is a fitting name for my shop. Fitting name for my shop. Although I do like the irony of uh, me making everything in my basement when my uh, shop name is Alchemist's Attic. Attic. Um, Saving the key point there. Alright, I think we've got about everything. Um, let's do this little, little thing here. For a keychain. And this one's just gonna be kind of like a little a little background color for for keychain here. I I'm making a, a keychain that has like a little red hand in it, um, but I didn't actually make the back of the hand. So we're just gonna we're just gonna make it one sided and make a little bit of a gold background here. Make sure there's no cat hair in there. All right. How many things am I doing at once? For for like resin wise? Um. Well, let's see here. So I'm. I'm doing this little keychain here, which is going to be part of like this set, um, eventually. I have I have this set here with the the red hands. Um, I am doing a repour here for a different commission set, and then this is going to be kind of like a dump mold, so I have some like spares of this type of dice because I like sending you know spare, not spare, but like bonus dice and stuff when people order things. Um, I have my, my little rainbow uh, project that I'm working on over here. Or do you mean like art projects that are not what I'm working on right this second? Because that's a different story too. Yeah, it's, this, is a, this is very much a commissioned... Oh, okay. I was wondering if you were the one who ordered the red hands. Um, oh, just on the table. And then, yeah, I'm working on a lot of commission things. Um, that one's not, but I have the neon color here is for a commission set of D6s for Jen, who may or may not still be in the chat. Um, and yeah, and then like I said, repour and then these dice. And then it's really not, I'm not doing a lot of, I mean, I guess I'm doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of little things, I guess, at the moment. You know, usually I'll do like three sets of dice at a time, and that's like it. Just three full sets of dice, but I have lots of like little projects I guess I'm working on at the moment. All right, so this is just going to be a little gold background. Let me set that off to the side. And these, so this I'm going to let sit just a little bit, um, but let's get the hands maybe going. There's a little bit of extra resin in there. We might be able to use it on something. Um, so I'm going to dip these hands into the resin, and the reason for that is there's all sorts of like little nooks and crannies in here and so they might you know air is going to try and hang out in those spots and i want to try and get that air out it, like it's going to be easier in this container to try and get that air out than it is in the die um let's see if i can show you you can kind of see some some air bubbles oh let's see, don't see a cat hair get out of there it's always cat hair free cat hair with every purchase of dice um get that out of there you can see some bubbles there, maybe above the. Oh, kind of, yeah, I see those bubbles. That's because there was like air trapped in between the fingers and stuff. It's easier to 
try and get that stuff out here. And just try and get it out, you know, once I have it in the mold. And then we'll take that, hopefully, you know, kind of a buffer of resin there, and we'll put that in the mold. And again, I have this set up so that the, the highest number is on the top at the moment. And part of that is just so that I can place things how I, I want them. And part of it is because the polymer clay is like maybe slight, just slightly heavier than the resin. And I'd rather it be weighted, you know, to get a little bit more towards getting a higher number than getting a lower number. All right, there's that hand in there. I'll see if I can show you. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, no, I can't really see it. I'll show you with the B6, but it'll be easier to see there. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down the line here. Get everything uh, all debubbleified. Oh, here. See if I can show you the big bubbles that are in between the fingers there. Oh, it'll focus. Yeah, you can see the big bubbles there that are trapped in between the fingers. I'm just trying to get those worked out. Um, I, these will be going into a pressure pot, um, which will take all of the little tiny air bubbles. And so I put like all the resin under like high pressure, about, you know, uh, what did I put it under? About four, thir what is it, 40 PSI? About 40 PSI. Um, and that will take all of the air bubbles and squish them down really, really small until you can't even see them. I don't know why I cleared those off. I'm going to be putting those up again. Uh, it's going to, yeah, it's going to push, make all those air bubbles really, really small until you can't even see them. Um, but if there's bigger air bubbles, you know, like the ones that were trapped around the fingers there, that can be an issue. Um, you can end up with like big voids and gaps and stuff because it's like there wasn't enough resin to like fill in uh, where the, uh, where the air bubbles were. This one in. Alright. There's that one. Issue for weighing. Can't imagine which would look better. Oh, the, the bubbles. Um it's it is partially an issue for weighing because all of the bubbles will try to rise to the surface. Um, which can cause it's... Oh, hi, Jen! Uh, very generous is the person who's getting the neon dice. Um, it, yeah, it can cause some weighting issues because all the bubbles try to rise to the surface, and so suddenly the, the top, whichever one that is, is going to be lighter. But also, like, the type of molds that I have, um, if I didn't put it in a pressure pot, there'd be no place for, like, the air to go, and so they would end up probably more bubbly, um, even than than you would think, um, just because I, I mean, have lids on them, so there's no real way for air to escape. All of that, all of that stuff would kind of come together and make giant bubbles. <laughs> all right, let's put this one in here. This one's going to be kind of resting a little bit more. Yeah, some of these are going to be a little bit more, ooh, a little bit more kind of on the bottom. Some of these are going to be a little bit more, like, upright. Um, just so that I'm trying to make it so that like they'll look good from every angle, but also, you know, I want them to look the best when you roll the highest face. I feel like that's just kind of like a good way to do things, like make it so that you see the best angle when you, you know, it's going to look the best when you, you roll the best. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> to a certain extent. They just take a lot of time. They just take a lot of time when you're making something that small. Uh, I, I mean, I enjoy making things, just in general. But it definitely, definitely takes time to try and make something that's really small and detailed. Um, but it was, it was kind of a fun challenge. I, I did it in multiple sessions, which helped. You know, I, I, I took a break and worked on other things in between. Just so I could, you know, kind of take a little bit of break. I did, I actually worked on these on a stream um, a little bit. I made one on a stream. Um, actually, I could probably, I wonder if that's still on my page. If you wanted to order more, would you, I do them differently? Uh, probably not. Uh, part of the reason, 
Oh, you saw it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, part of the reason that I did them like this is so that they could all be slightly different, um, which is something that I thought would, you know, be cool if they were all just slightly different from each other, so it wasn't just a cookie cutter type thing. Um, if you wanted them all to be uniform, I'm getting a, a resin 3D printer soon. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to, like, I'm, I'm excited for this. I haven't, I haven't gotten it yet, so we'll see how it goes. But I should be able to, like, 3D model things on the computer and then print them out. Um, that'll be better for, like, doing everything the same, though. Um, but, but, no, if, if, if I was going to do more of these, I think part of the fun of it is that they're all... A little bit different. Everything, you know, things are kind of being held in different shapes and stuff. And that's just kind of kind of a fun fun thing. Just takes a lot of time. Just takes a lot of time. Uh, I think I ooh, that's kind of on the bottom a lot. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I think that's good. I don't want to shove them to a corner. I want it trying to get this kind of centered correctly. Uh, I guess I could go that way, but I like this one upside down. Yeah, yeah, that works. All right. Mass production via printing is probably the solution. To be fair, I do. I I just started learning Blender, which is the three D modeling software, um, yesterday. But I do really enjoy 3D modeling things. It's going to be useful if I want to do um, things that are going to have kind of the same shapes. I was, I think I was mentioning this earlier, like if I want to do dice with skulls in them, it wouldn't necessarily make sense for me to make a whole bunch of differently shaped skulls. Like they're pretty much all the same. I might have slightly different sizes or something, but you know, it, it'd be easier in like that case to just 3D print a bunch of the same thing. I could like paint them, you know, slightly different and stuff, but you know, you're not going to notice major differences between two different skulls, <laughs> probably. Um, and the, you know, there's things like that. And then also, if I want to start trying to like up my production a little bit of some more complex designs, okay, here, let's see if we can get this in here, and then I'll see if I can show you. And how things are going. I can show you a little bit easier. The D6 is best. <laughs> Dice with skulls. Um, here's, there's a little bit of, of gold in there. Let me get, um, oops, let's see. So, like, the, this one just kind of has the, there we go. That one's just kind of resting in the bottom there. The D20 has it kind of upright. Um, the D4 is going to have it kind of upright as well. Oh, actually, I want more different D4. I want the other opposite of the D4. Um, I want D4 down. Um, the reason for that is because of how I'm angling things. I'm going to have it, I want it to be upright, and that's going to be easier if I can stick the fingers down in the top. So this one's going to be, I'm going to use a different one. Make all kinds of skulls. True, true. Might still be easier though to like do. I might I would maybe still do 3D modeling and printing for that one just because I so I could use those designs again. Just because it'd be fun to do a lot of dice with skulls. <laughs> I like skulls. Uh, there's, there's still some bubbles here. Let me see if I can get those bubbles out. Yeah, I, I did, it, it's, so I was, like I was saying, I, I started learning Blender yesterday, um, and I did do, I did do 3D modeling, because I went to school originally for engineering, it's completely different than the engineering 3D modeling software that I, uh, that I did learn in, in school, which is kind of funny, so completely different, but it's, it's fun, I, I, I've always enjoyed doing the, like, 3D modeling stuff. I like doing stuff, you know, with my hands, probably more, but there's, you still get the satisfaction of, like, making something, like, visible, that's kind of tangible. Um, I made a, I made a donut, uh, 
if uh, if you are still here, Jen, could you type in the Discord uh, exclamation mark dis exclamation mark Discord uh, thing? There's a cat outside my door. Thank you. That's a little. Why didn't that go? Why didn't that go? That's weird. Oh, there it is. It was just really slow. I don't know why that was so slow. Yeah, I posted a picture in there um, earlier of a donut that I uh, that was my first is my first ever thing that I've made in Blender. I'm following a tutorial online. It's been really fun so far. All right, let's make sure that hands down all the way. All right. I know. I know. It just took a while. I was weird. Streamlabs are just like do 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 do. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm adding a little bit more clear to this because I want to do a bonus before as well. That's just going to be the bonus is just going to be uh, the base resin. All right. Okay, let's see here. I think I want to do this one first, maybe. And that's because I think I want this to be able to flow into all those spaces. Basically, I want to do all the stuff where air can get trapped first. So, like the, this one over here in the corner, i move this over so you can see. I have a whole bunch of, of pieces of, of different uh, kind of flat sheets in there. Um, and so, there's plenty of places where air might get trapped. I'm going to try and get this in here first. Because it gets thicker and thicker as I go. You know, it's, it'll feel a little bit better if I, uh, if I do it when it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit easier for the air to travel up to the top if it's a little bit thinner. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit funky because I'm going to do something different than the other ones. Let me make sure I have that correct. That's going to be come back here. Alright, and that one I might have to add more to in a minute, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think... Next, I'm going to do these because I want this to also kind of flow and be fairly even. I think I need some more green though. I need a little bit more green mica powder. It's not quite as opaque as I would have liked. But that's okay. Let's some more green. Maybe not that much green. That's a lot of green. All right. All right. Just a little bit more opaque. There we go. That's much more opaque. Um, and this one I'm doing um, a bunch of, of layers. I've done like a pink and an orange and a yellow. I'm trying to do a rainbow, but it's I'm doing it in seven pores. <laughs> So all of the colors of the rainbow, and I'm going to do one with like clouds in it. That's the plan, anyways. But I want to do just enough in each one to kind of cover the last layer. I want them to be fairly thin. Which is, again, why I'm doing this one now. It's because I'd much rather it be a little bit thinner so it can flow a little bit better. Um, like... It makes sense to pour both of these when they're a little bit thicker, this one, so that the gold foil stays suspended nicely. And this one, because we don't want all of the stuff sinking to the bottom. Uh, we want it to sink part of the way, but we don't want all of it to sink to the bottom. We, we want it to have kind of an effect where just parts of it are sinking. Um, so I'm going to be doing those when it's, you know, a little bit later as it gets a little bit thicker. Mm. Just a cat hair sitting there. It's always cat hair sitting there. <laughs> Gotta head off to bed. All right. Well, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. And I will. I will be sure to send you photos once I uh, once I have things out of the molds. Uh, but yeah. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you could make it.
wonder if I should, well, no, maybe not, I don't know. You and I are in the same time zone, Jen. And I feel like everybody else, it's like later for them when, uh, when I start, start streaming. So it's just like, maybe I should start earlier, but then, I don't know, I feel like that'd be inconvenient to a certain extent for, well, at least for both of us. I think it's going to be a fairly, fairly average to, I don't know, I guess two and a half hours is one of my shorter streams now. <laughs> Does that seem, used to be like my normal stream, but I feel like that's almost one of my, my shorter ones now. Oh, this one seems good. Make sure that all of these corners get covered. Alright, there's that. Alright, alright, alright. Let these let these settle a bit. It, this D four may end up not having the clouds. It may just end up with the uh, with the colors. We'll see. It's getting rather full. How's this one doing? This could be just maybe just a little bit more. A little bit one more drop. Just one more drop. all those corners I I mean resin does you know flow and stuff which is is good but I need to flow a little bit more maybe and a little bit more to our d20 here it's it's bigger it's you know it it widens out towards the middle just want to drink resin o'clock mmm delicious it does have kind of a honey consistency so I mean if you want to like have something that's a similar consistency, maybe just go drink some honey, which I think would put you off from wanting to drink resin, quite honestly. If you just straight up drink honey, I don't know, that seems like it'd be, uh, that seems like it might be a little bit much. I guess maybe I'm not a sweets person all that much either. You'll just eat soap. All right, that seems like a good plan. <laughs> seems healthier for you somehow. Oh no. You know it's bad when I'm I'm condoning uh, eating soap. Alright, we pour a little bit more in here. Where's Bosun when you need them? You have a fellow uh, fellow soap eater. Alright, there's that. I think those are all good. Um, and then I think, well, let's, uh, let's fill in, let's fill in those later, I think. Uh, let's do these next, I think. I think that we're thick enough now that all of our, our gold foil and everything should say it's fairly, fairly well suspended. And it's kind of good sizes there so let's, let's start filling these up i think yeah it's getting a little bit thicker still oh, okay 
So I'm going quiet for a second here. I'm trying to oops, concentrate on getting the resin in the right spot. A little bit more of there. Oops. Ooh, big air bubble coming up as it makes its way underneath the hand. Big chunk, but that's okay. All right, let me make sure that's my stick. We've got our, we got our little bonus D4 here. We'll, we'll add. <laughs> oh man, I hear Fitz is back. Fitz is back and wants to uh, come hang out. It sounds like he's he's such a funny cat. All, right, all of my cats are all of my cats are very affectionate in different ways. And they're all very mad when uh, I won't hang out with them. <laughs> uh, I, I've had all four of them at different points come and, and yell or scratch at this door. It's somewhat amusing to me that I can always tell which one it is, too. Because, like, I can tell you that's Fitz. I know what his meow sounds like. Um, you know, not will come, not will sometimes meow, but she mostly will just come and scratch really, really fast at the door. If they're scratching at the door and it's not fast, it's koshi. And then uh, Luna will also sometimes just come and scream outside the door. And she's also she also likes to scream, I guess. Usually it's fits or uh, not though. Luna was screaming a whole bunch. I think it was yesterday. I've been here yesterday. I think it was yesterday. What was I doing yesterday? Was I sanding things? I think I was sanding things yesterday. Yeah, that's what it was. I've been here sanding things yesterday and. and Luna was walking around screaming, very, un very unhappy. They, they always want to be in whatever room I'm in. Well, not always, like, I don't know. Sometimes they'll just go sleep in a different room, but for the most part, like if I'm in my office, they're in the office. I mean, I do have lots of, like, good places for them to sleep and stuff, but... I guess to be fair, usually I'm in, I'm in here, or I'm in my office, or I'm in my room. And I guess the cats usually sleep in my office or in my room, which I, to, yeah, that's fair. Maybe I'm just hanging out with them, maybe it's that direction. They're not hanging out with me, I just happen to be in the same room that they're in. That seems plausible. Now we're going to spritz this with a little bit of, of uh, rubbing alcohol. Should help break the surface tension on there and not affect how it sets up. So hopefully, the bubbles will uh, disappear. All right, things are things are definitely getting thicker. Hmm, I feel like that would be too big of a chunk. I'm actually pulling out a little bit of the gold. I'm gonna put it maybe over here. I feel like it's blocking it a little bit too much. I'm going to put it in one of the bigger dice, the bigger hand. There we go. D8 just has a lot. Alright. Let some of these uh, big bubbles work their way out. Alright, I'm going to set these on my tray. That's what I put everything in the, into the pressure pot on. Just to get these a little bit out of the way. Over here. I'm going to leave the lids off for now so that I can, I can let all of the air bubbles hopefully travel up to the surface. Alright, let's move on to Jen's dice. Starting to get a little bit thicker. Let's uh, let's get all of our clear in here. That one, the clear can go in whenever. 
put in a little bit of glitter. There's a little bit of the shimmer here. Just a little, just add a little bit there. This may be about. Probably should have been a little bit more clear now than thinking about it. Hmm. Actually, I think we'll be okay as long as we use all of the clear because I have a little bit more. And I think I'm going to wait until it's nice and thick and then I think I'm going to pipe in the. Uh, I think I'm going to try piping it in. I'm just thinking here about what the, the best way to add the paint color is so that I can make sure that it's sinking like unevenly, which is kind of what that Petri effect, you know, is. It's kind of a, like, it's kind of the, the, the all the colors sinking unevenly to the bottom. Kind of like blobs almost. Um, it's like a lava lamp. Let's see here. A little bit more over here. Is that a hair or is that a... Nope, that's just... That's a light. <laughs> thought it was hair, it's just the way the light's hitting it. Alright, I'm going to get these mostly full of the clear. If, if I have, you know, too much of the color, it, you won't be able to see, like, the blobs and stuff, so we want to get mostly, mostly this clear in there. That was what I was worried about a moment, just a second ago, was that I wasn't going to have enough. But I think it's actually going to work out well. Alright, we'll have just where I'm at. All right. That's pretty well uh, emptied out. So, for these, I think I'm going to use perfects. I think that's the way I'm going to go with this. I'm going to grab new ones. It's easiest at the moment. And I have them. Alright. Let's cut off a little bit of the tip here. Cross the tip. Hey. stuff rise to the surface here. Oh, some of the some of the, the butterflies came off, but looks like it's thick enough they may not sink, which might be interesting. Or they'll not sink all the way. But for the most part, butterflies are intact. Um, well, we're waiting for that full. Let's put that down again, get all the air bubbles popped. Um, let's fill this the rest of the way. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the rest of this black and silver and use that up because these are just going to be like bonus dice if people uh if people order fade or fudge dice they'll get like a just an extra die with it the butterflies are safe i i one of my few concerns because um, I think that these are going to turn out good. One of my few concerns here is that the butterflies aren't going to be super visible. Because they really do blend, like, the colors match maybe far too well <laughs> with the uh, the pigments and the butterflies. And also then, like, they glow very similar colors. So we might want to do contrasting colors instead. So, well, well do we want to do that? I haven't actually added the stuff yet. Do we want to do, like, opposite colors? Do like blue with yellow butterflies, and then like yellow with blue butterflies, or All right? Do you have a do you have a preference for for which color with which butterfly? I have. Um. Like we could do. I was I was thinking like switch the green and the pink and switch the blue and the yellow, but um, we could we could like rotate everything one or something too. So that everything's all mixed up. No rhyme or reason to it. Uh, rotation. All right, let's do that. 
and then just a second in. So instead of doing, so the way we, we have them in order at the moment, so we have blue, pink, green, yellow. So instead of, and then the inks can, oh, that sounds like a good plan. The inks can correspond to the butterflies. All right, so instead of doing that here, oops, I'm just going to slide everything down one. So yellow will be with blue butterflies, blue will be with pink butterflies, pink will be with green butterflies, and green will be with yellow butterflies. I think that's a good, I think those will be good combos, actually. Cool. Those will be good, good combinations. Uh, I'm excited for that actually. I'm, I'm glad that I thought of that before we added the uh, the pigment because I think that'll that'll be nice. Gold here. No, I'm not gonna add the green. I'm gonna add actually the clear with the gold here because I have a bunch of that left over and that'll be good with this uh, black and green gold. So uh, sounds like these are for a character that you're going to be playing fairly soon. Is that uh, right, Ken? Because you said that there was a, sort of a deadline for when you wanted these to be done. And I saw the character art, which is very cool. I guess I didn't, I don't know, I don't remember if you told me, like, what game you were going to be playing them in. I don't know if you mentioned that or not. I don't need any more here. Get a little bit here. That's plenty there, so let's add some here. All right, cool. This is good. I, I'm glad I have some like dump mold, uh, fake fudge dice, whichever you want to call them. Fate dice, fudge dice. Because it has to be nice for sending along with orders. Cool. Alright. Got that all pretty much worked out. I think. Yeah, I think this is thick enough that we can, we can pipe that in now. I'm going to kind of do it like I tried to do the yellow before. Um, how yeah, well this works because it is rather thick. Yeah, it's rather thick. So I'm trying to get it all in the pipe that it's taking a second. Alright, excellent. I'm gonna try and do kind of globules in there, kind of like a lava lamp. This is going in with the blue butterflies, which I think will look pretty. Alright. I'm just going to kind of, kind of layer things on top a little bit. Let's see if things sink any. There we go. And I'll do the lid in the color. Actually, I have quite a bit left over here of that part. All right. All right. Blue is going to be with the pink butterflies. That could be pretty. Man, yep, it's definitely gotten thicker. This is, is good. Alright, I'm going to do 
kind of the same thing. I'm going to try and add some kind of like globules of different heights and stuff. Try not to, try not to mess up any of the butterflies in there. We'll see how much of this sinks too. We'll see how things turn out. But we'll see, we'll see if things sink. I'm hoping that it doesn't move too much. Just because I'm, that's why I'm trying to do this while it's thicker. Is so that hopefully all the pigment and stuff doesn't move too much from where I put it. This pink is so bright. You know, I'm so happy with the green. Because the green, I was worried, was not going to be very green. Like, if you look at, like, the container um, of the pigment itself, it's just rather, it's rather, like, pastel almost. But then once you get it in the resin, it's, it's nice and bright. It's good. Yeah, I'm trying to do some different heights and stuff. This is going in with the green butterflies, which I always like pink and green together. <laughs> I guess it maybe it always makes me think of watermelon a little bit, but also I just like, or flowers. I like a good like floral with like a good pink and a green. It's kind of complementary, so it makes sense. Like they're opposite each other on the color wheel, um, which makes like everything watermelon good. I am unfortunately allergic to it though, which is just sad. Unfortunately, allergic to watermelon. Actually, just most melon. Melon's one of the worst for my uh, for my fruit allergy that I have. It's not like it'll kill me or anything. Uh, it'll just make my throat really itch. It's just really annoying. But it makes me sad because I really like melon. I like watermelon. was with the yellow butterflies. It's going to be a little bit more subtle, probably. Um, but hopefully, you know, glowing in the dark, it might be fun to have just, you know, that slight contrast there. This one might be a little bit more subtle. <laughs> I need more green in my, uh, in my, uh, pipette. Just a second here. high hopes for these. I think this will be, I think this will be cool. We'll see, we'll see. Everything's a little bit of a mystery, uh, until it comes out of the pressure pot, comes out of the molds, but I think these are going to be fun. And actually, I've got a little bit extra. Uh, let me grab, grab a D6 mold here. Ooh! Ah. Okay, too tall. Let me just make, I'm going to use this as a, a little bit of a dump mold as well. Actually, I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill this in first, because I do actually have, you know, some dice already that I can use as, as the little bonus die, but I need to have this filled in all the way. The reason I need to have this filled in all the way is because if I don't have all of them filled in and I put the lid on, it's not going to, uh, they're going to end up funky. I don't want that. Don't want it ending up funky. Mm 
no funky dice here. Okay. There we go. Now, now I'll do my our, your little bonus here. Maybe we'll end up with this one. Alright. I'm just going to put all the all the colors in here and we'll have uh, hopefully kind of a rainbow uh, rainbow glow in the dark die. I think that'll be fun. Let's see if we can get things a little bit contrasty without being I don't want to accidentally make brown or anything. We'll do blue next. Then we'll do pink and we'll do yellow. And that's a little bit of blue left. And that's a pink. I do like this pink. It's so bright. Cheerful. Pink left, and so I'm gonna do yellow. I want some yellow in there. Get all the colors in there. That's more fun. Do the lid here in yellow. All right. Cool. I'm gonna grab a D4 mold just so I can do. Let's start on a different uh, little. Spare die because those are always useful to have. I just use these crystal D4 molds as like. And I have leftover resin, I put it in there, and then if people order a set of dice, uh, I have I send along a little extra little extra die. talking about this earlier, but I wish I was more creative. And I mean that in the sense that, like, and I realize that everybody does this to a certain extent, but I very much take my inspiration directly from things. Um, like, like, most of my dice are directly themed after something. Um, but, like, I was, uh, and that's part of the reason that I enjoy commissions is because I enjoy having kind of a collaborative sort of space where, you know, I can come up with, like, how to do things, but other people... Ooh, gonna come to the last of your lineup. That's exciting. What are you gonna do when you're done, though? What, what are you gonna draw? Um... What was I talking about? Oh, oh, um... You know, I, I pull things kind of directly from a certain spot. It's not necessarily, like, I don't usually do things just because I think it would be pretty or something. Usually I'm just kind of like, I want to make something that looks like a sunset. You know, I, I, I pull things very directly from places. And I, I, I've, you know, art in general, a lot, it's derivative, a lot of it. Finish the icon series, maybe take requests and just draw more couple picks. For com I'll commission more from people. Cool. Do you do like icons and stuff? Like if I wanted to commission you to, you to draw like a profile picture or something for, I don't know, either Twitch or YouTube or something? I guess I can talk to you later about that. I'm going to have to answer that right this second. Oh 
gosh, I'm being one of those those people in school that was always like, can you draw me? Can you draw me? To be fair, I, I was always that person. So, you know, it hasn't changed much. Although in this case, there's a reason for it. You've never done something simple like icons yet. And your cool lightning headshot super shot. Oh, that's right, okay. Oh, I still have some clear resin here. Yeah, I don't I don't know necessarily if I'd be looking for something simple or just something to use as like a profile picture. Because I think I feel like it'd be cool if it was drawn. It doesn't necessarily have to be like like a simple eye contact thing. I'm, I just I just remember the fact that my um, my icon for my my uh, Twitch icon at the moment is um, a pretty old photo of me. <laughs> it's a pretty old photo. And it's just like oh yeah, that's from a while ago. That was at least back when I was living. That seems fair. Yeah yeah yeah. I'm not promising anything yet. Uh, I need to like figure out what I'd want, but but I do appreciate giving it the old college try. <laughs> Start this over here, I guess. I'm gonna actually. Oh, why did that? That's fine. I'm just taking stuff. Okay. I guess that's kind of where I, I'm at with, with the dice, too, to a certain extent. It's just like, sure, let's try it. But, you know, if I, if I can't do it, I'm always happy to, you know, read funny or whatever. Just because, you know, I'd rather someone have something that they're happy with. Okay. Make sure everything's popped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're busy and stuff. Well, that was something I said before, too. Uh, at least to a friend, was, you know, set a limit on how many commissions you do at a time. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a good plan. Just so you don't end up with, like, a backlog or being overworked or something. So I should open up some more commission slots for me, but I should do that. I need to, I need to go and update all that stuff. I was kind of waiting for a couple of things to get polished first. I need to, I think I need something to speed up the, I need to get like a second tumbler or something so I can polish more things at once. That is very nice of you though. I do, I do appreciate that. Again, I just have to figure out, I just have to figure out what I want drawn. I'm, I'm trying to get all these bubbles popped so I can get all these lids on. Things are looking pretty good. Pretty good over there. Those are all have the one up, which means that uh, it's a lot easier. Okay, those are fine. I was actually doing almost better than expected. There might be a bubble under the wing there, but. I think we'll be okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, um, let me just make sure this bubble here is gone. But I do look forward to seeing what you do next, too. I look forward to seeing the one that you're coloring now, but I look forward to seeing what you do next. I like seeing, I like seeing your art. I like seeing what people are working on in general. If anyone else is listening and wants to show off their art too, uh, I do think you have a really good use of of, of light and color and detail. You're good at details. 
All right, let me make sure everything's good to go. And let's put some lids on, I think. I think I can start putting the lids on these. Everything's starting to look pretty good. There's a bubble in there. Never mind, just a moment. Let's see if I can get this bubble out. Nope, not put cat hair in, get the bubble out. I think I actually succeeded and got the bubble out. I wasn't necessarily expecting to actually get the bubble out all that easily. Alright. Start putting some lids on. Alright. I'm going to try and make sure that all of the uh, little keys here are in the right spot. I don't want to like press down and get rid of all that resin just because, you know, I want, I want there to be extra resin to fill in all of the gaps of the little tiny air bubbles in there. And that's why there's, I've domed it a little bit and also have a little bit on the lid. You know, I want there, I want there to be enough extra that you can fill in any, any gaps. Okay, let's see, 20, oops, there's a little bit of a bubble on this lid. You can see that. There's the hair here, that's not what I want. Oh no, actually it wasn't a hair, it's just a piece of like old resin. Still not what I want. Uh, okay, get this trash on. What um do you have something that would be like your, your dream job? Or even if it wasn't like something that you think would like make you a bunch of money. If you could do like one thing all day, what would you want to do? I guess that's the real question here. Like do you what what would be like the the something that you would love to do for a long period of time, I guess. What would you keep yourself occupied with if you could do anything? It's funny, because, like, any company, visual development artists, that'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. If you start to, you know, if you start doing uh, uh, any sort of, like, indie video games or uh, animations or something, I have a minimal amount of, of voice acting uh, knowledge now. I guess that's something you could do to a certain extent. Like you could start like looking for other people and just make like your own. I always wanted to work for Super Giant Games, Hades Transistor, or make art for Magic the Gathering official team. That'd be really cool. Either that or contributing to like writing or direction of a project. See, that's the, that's the stuff that I'm. Well, yeah, you'd be really good at that. Dude, you could just make like. I, I, you could make like your own dating sim or something if you wanted to. That's something that you could make and put online. It would take a lot of work. There's something that you could do. You have the skills for it. Um, you just simply want to bring other people's ideas to life in some way or your own with a reliable team. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. It's always good to have a good team, I feel like. That's always... I feel like that's not resting quite right. You considered a dating sim or a fighting game for all your scattered lore? That'd be really cool. I still, I'll volunteer to uh, do voice acting or something for it. I'll make all the Hoo! noises for your for your fighting game. All the all the dying noises that when you listen to them by themselves are like awkward. Like when you start thinking about someone standing in like a recording booth just making weird noises of like dying. It's a lot funnier 
I feel like if you ever watch anything animated and like someone like hits a tree branch and then hits the ground and then rolls down a hill, like all of the noises of it, someone had to make in like a recording booth. It's just always like, I don't know, kind of funny once you, uh, once you realize that that's, you <laughs> pay me to yodel into a mic. Oh dear. I mean, if that's what it comes to, that's what it comes to. But no, it's, it, yeah, there's a lot of, acting is an embarrassing job. And like, I feel like it's, you don't necessarily realize it when you're watching things. Or maybe you do, I don't, I don't know. But like, when you start thinking about what people are actually doing to play characters and stuff, it's just like, out of context, that is ridiculous and very, like, embarrassing. <laughs> it's, I guess what, once you take any sort of, like, acting out of context, it, it becomes almost, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot more ridiculous once you take things out of context. Like, there's, yeah, I don't know. Like, you watch a movie and, like, the main characters get together or something, and you're just like, yeah! You know, the, the, the two romantic leads just kissed. And then you stop to think about it, and it's just like, it's a couple of actors who've just been told, hey, go kiss that person. It's like, you know, in context, it makes complete sense. Out of context, it's just, it's just awkward. <laughs> but, and it's, it's the same with making, like, fighting noises and stuff for, for, like, I'm trying to get that in the right spot. Um, fighting noises and stuff for for voice acting and things, because you're making them out of context. You're making all of these noises without like actually having a scene or anything happening. You're just making grunting noises in a recording booth, and it just gets awkward. And I'm sure you know you get. You get used to it and stuff, but it's just kind of, it's just kind of funny. It's funny when, because like, I'll, I'll watch things every once in a while now. I'm just like, oh man, I can just imagine, or, or like some of the old cartoons and stuff. Like there's over the top noises and stuff, and I'm just imagining someone in a recording booth. Just like, making all of the weird uh, Looney Tunes noises and stuff. Just like... I, I, I can appreciate this. I can appreciate the work that went into standing in recording booths and making a whole bunch of funny noises. <laughs> but no, being paid to yodel into a mic, that, that's just voice acting right there, I think. That's just how it works. You know, you could make, not even necessarily like a dating sim, but some sort of like choose your own adventure type thing. It doesn't even have to be like romance or anything. Some sort of like choose your own adventure type thing that's like set up like a dating sim with like that art, like sort of static art and stuff of different characters and things. But uh, is maybe like a fantasy type thing. That'd be cool. going on upstairs. I hear all sorts of thunking upstairs. I'm not sure if there's cats that are fighting. <laughs> you can see that too? I can see, I can see you doing that. Like, because it makes sense with like all of your lore and stuff, like doing like a fantasy type thing. Sorry, I'm trying to spread some of this out. It'd be a lot of work, though. So. Yeah, like an interactive visual novel. That's yeah. That was that was that was kind of what I was. That's yeah. That that was kind of what I was thinking. Interactive visual novel. That's that's the way to put it. Um. 
can stack these so they're here well. All right, oops, I just stuck my finger in that. All right, I think that's pretty much everything. I'm going to grab that as well. I think I've got lids on everything. I don't see anything uh, just sitting out of place. Got all of our lids on. Put that on there as well. That's going to act as the background. Um, all right, so I think that is everything for tonight. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm going to put these into the pressure pot. Let me see. Let me see how much air I have in there. I might need to fill that up a little bit more. So I'll probably do, I'll do my sign off now. Um, so I do stream every Wednesday and Saturday night. So if you ever want to come hang out, you know, I'll, I'll be here 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time those two days. Um, I do have a Discord if you ever want to come, you know, chat about D&D or Arts and Crafts or anything like that. I'll put that in the chat again. Um, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully I can I can see folks again on Saturday. Thanks for coming to hang out. Um, and have a good night, everybody. Or morning. I don't know what time it is for you. Alright. Bye guys.